All right. In this video, what we're going to go over is how you would actually conduct a Pearson correlation and then generate a scatter plot to go along with that correlation in R. So the data that we're working with is a simulated data set based on a hypothetical survey you could give people based on their drinking habits. So participants is just an ID number for each participant. Binges is how many binges this hypothetical individual reported in the last month. So how many times in the last 30 days have you had four more drinks if you're a female or five or more drinks if you're a male in one sitting? How many times have they engaged in binge drinking? Next variable we have to work, work with is the drinks per week. So in the last seven days, how many drinks have you had? And then the number of alcohol-related problems that the individual is reporting. So now that we've got the data lined up and out of the way, let's go ahead and create a correlation analysis for that first one. Now, one thing to note is that when you do this, a Pearson correlation is the default. And actually conducting a correlation analysis is actually really, really simple. The function that you need is core.test. And then the first argument you need to input is your x variable, or one of the two variables that you want to look at. So in this case, let's look at our alcohol data frame. And specifically, let's look at the binges variable in that data frame. The next argument that you need to enter is your second variable. Let's go ahead and look at the drinks per week variable. Oh, if I can type today. So it's really just that simple. Go ahead and get control enter, run the code, and then here's the output for it down here at the bottom. Again, notice that we're looking at the Pearson's correlation here. It tells us what data we ran this correlation for the T value from the hypothesis test, the degrees of freedom for the correlation, and then the P value are all right there. Then it will give us the 95% confidence interval by default of our correlation coefficient. And then it will actually give us that correlation coefficient down at the bottom. So in this case, we can see that our P value is less than 0.05. It's even less than 0.01. If we want to use a more stringent alpha, our confidence interval does not contain zero, and our correlation coefficient is 0 0.61 and change. So, based on that, we have a strong, significant, positive correlation between the number of times people are reporting engaging in binge drinking and how many drinks they're reporting drinking in a given week. So, now that we know that we have this significant relationship, let's go ahead and create a scatter plot so that we can actually see this data, so to speak. So, first thing we need to do is call up the ggplot library. Then, what we need to do is actually create sort of the bones of the graph. So, graph1 equals ggplot, and then first argument in this ggplot function is the data frame that our data is in. So in this case, that would be alcohol. Then we need to specify what ggplot calls the aesthetics. So where do you want to assign a variable to a given feature? So in this case, we want our x-axis to be binges, and we want our y-axis to be drinks per week. Now, we don't see anything yet. To see something, we actually have to print out graph 1, and we can see the basic bare bones of this graph. Now we can go through and start adding the pieces. Add a plus sign to tell R to add to graph 1. We want to add geome point. Now you could just leave it right there, and you can see, hey, look, we have drinks per week, we have binges, and now we have an actual scatter plot with points, where each individual value is represented by a point. 
However, we can go through and we can make this graph better and appropriate for something that you might see in a publication or on a scientific poster. So first thing, let's make the size of these points a little bit bigger. There we go. Now let's change the shape of the points. Now, the shape is a numerical code. I've just remembered the shapes that I like. They tend to be in the low to high 20s. Um, there are codes out there on the internet. You can Google and find them. Um, or you can just trial and error, see what shape you like. Now, I'm going to go ahead and specify the color of the border. and I'm going to do that based on the current academic institution's colors that I'm at. So, 2, 3, 4, 4 which is going to be a type of navy blue. And then I'm going to continue to use those school, school colors to give the fill a very specific look as well, FCB00. Now this is something you definitely want to do if you were presenting at a scientific conference is maybe have the color on your graphs match the school colors that are going to be in the logo that's also on your poster. Now, the other things that we're going to need to do for this scatter plot are change our x and y axes to make them a little more informative. To do this, we're going to need to add another layer. So go ahead and put that plus sign in there to indicate to add to this graph. Now I'm going to use the labs function to change that. So on the x axis, I want my label to be binges per month. See where that updates down there. I can add a second argument where I specify what I want my y-axis label to be. In this case, I want drinks per week. Now, oftentimes, a lot of people don't like this gray background, and I would be among them. You can pick a different background there, two that you could really look at or that I think are fairly acceptable. One is switch that to a black and white background that has a border. I ran that piece of code, didn't know how to add theme to plot. Oh, forgot my parentheses. There we go. Another one that you can do is theme classic. This is what you probably see most often in a different type of scientific publication. But sometimes having those grid lines on a scatter plot can be helpful. All right, so. Nice, short, and sweet. That's how you would conduct a correlation test with the Pearson correlation. Um, there are additional arguments where if you wanted a Spearman correlation, you could specify that as well, and that's in there, but we're not going to touch on them here. Good luck.